In this video, I'll explain a bit more about the user interface. Here are a couple shortcuts I should have mentioned in the last video. A shortcut to resize a window is just to put the mouse on the border and you can see the mouse cursor change. If you push button one or two, that'll resize it. If you hold down button three, it changes to a box and you can move the window. There's a shortcut for copying and pasting too. It's called mouse cording. So if you select some text, you hold down button one, but you don't let button one up. You keep holding it and you tap button two and that will cut it. If you click the mouse again on button one and just tap button three, that will paste it back. And since it's still in the snarf buffer, you can hold down button one, tap button three, and paste it again. And so you can copy and paste commands around or whatever else you want without taking your hand off the mouse. Oops. Now some things about the shell RC. As I mentioned in the video on namespaces, some of the stuff traditionally handled by the path environment variable is made obsolete by the union mounting feature called bind. But there are still other environment variables, and in plan 9 these are accessed as files. The slash env directory is a device that exposes itself as a file system. By running the ns command, oops, too far, we can see that the hash e device is bound to env. So there are a lot of variables any user of a Unix based system would be familiar with. So we can see path is actually here and we can just read it like it's a file. And path only goes to bin, everything else is bound onto bin. Um, the variables don't have a new line in them, so it'll do that to the terminal. We can cat any of the other ones. And doing the traditional echo dollar sign and the name works also. And if we add our own by just specifying something like that. We can see that color has now been added to the env directory. But it's not over here, so Remember, this is per process changes. So an environmental variable in one process might not show up in the other. Another thing about path, while the bin directory has programs from various locations mapped into one place, some of them by tradition are still in subdirectories. Oh, and another cool little thing, there's a command called LC, which is actually just a shell script that takes LS, pipes it into a bunch of stuff, and lays everything out in columns. Um, if it has an uh, asterisk next to it, that means it's executable. 
And if it has a slash next to it, that means it's a directory. So it's just a handy little option for viewing the files. Um, so ping. Ping is a command everyone knows, but it says there is no ping. Um, just the way things have been traditionally laid out in the Plan 9 system, ping is in the IP directory. So if we look here. What's down? Oh, here it is. So there's a directory called IP in slash bin. And we could see here there's a bunch of programs in the IP directory. And there's ping and a bunch of other stuff having to do with uh, network stuff. So like IP config uh, does what IF config does in a lot of other systems. It's for configuring uh, interfaces. But to access ping, we have to put the directory first. And then it works. And remember to use the delete key to kill a program. So there's a few other ones that are also in directories. Um, all the games are in their own directory. So if you want to run a game, you have to type games first. So games slash mahjong, games slash, you know, NES, whatever you want to do. Uh, another one that's like that is git. So if you do git clone, it doesn't know what git is, but since git's in its own directory and the other commands are separated, you do git slash clone, oops, and that does work. Something else to keep in mind about RC is that while other Unix shells still hold to the tradition of running on teletypes and VT100 terminals, RC was written to work with this mouse-driven graphical interface, so arrow keys and such don't work the way you're used to. Uh, rather than a sort of old-school terminal, RC and Rio treat your shell session as a kind of long text document. If you need to interact with a Unix-like system, like say using Secure Shell, there is a VT emulator. And so you invoke that first. So this will say run the secure shell command in the VT emulator. And now I can use secure shell and it works like you know, a terminal would on uh, FreeBSD or Linux or something. So the VT emulator takes over the whole window and it also has its own uh, menu options. So button two brings up this menu, like your copy paste stuff. And then button three brings up some other menus for the thing. So that's how you'll exit it. So even if you exit Secure shell, it still sits there, and you have to manually exit the VT emulator. And now I'll give a brief overview of Acme, the do it all program. Acme is a file browser, text editor, development environment, alternative window manager. I won't be able to cover everything that you can do with it right now. That would take its own series of videos. But for an introduction, button three will open things like directories and files. And you can grab this little box here and you can move one window from one column to another. Um, and you can resize columns by going up to this solid box and moving it back and forth. Uh, 
you can also highlight words by clicking button one, highlighting it, and then button three will jump to the next instance of it, so it's kind of a search function. And you can execute pretty much anything by using button two, the middle click button. So you can use, if you click on the Dell here in the menu bar, let's delete, and it'll get rid of a window. Uh, new, we'll make a new window. So button two. Uh, you can make this new file by going where this little cursor is here right at the beginning and typing a name. And then if you button two on put, that will save it. If you do get, that's sort of like a refresh. So you can see that novel.txt is here now. Let's see. Um, and put will save what's in there. So if I open it again with button three, there's my novel. So new call here will make a new column. It's getting a little crowded here. And Dell call will delete a column. If you have some text you're working on, and you try to delete it before you save, a little error message box will pop up. If you click uh, delete again, it'll go ahead and close it without saving. Um, another thing you can do is you can run commands almost anywhere. So, can type pretty much anything anywhere, highlight it, middle click, and now if I refresh my home directory, I now have a new file there. Um, some of the programming features that the developers added are kind of handy. So if you you can write, you know, you can type in your uh, commands to run your compilers and stuff, and have your text and your code in another window. And if you compile it and there's an error, it'll bring up its own little window with the error and you can click on the error and it'll actually jump you to like the, the offending line in your code. Um, there's some fun stuff like that in here. Also another thing is that all these menu options can be edited. So you can get rid of them or put them in. So the menu bars can be edited. You can put other commands in there to run other things. And exit will exit Acme. And that's about it for now. So have fun.